It seemed like you didn't like Taylor. Why was that? Oh, I think it's playing the worst game on target. Kyle for sure. It was never like, I don't like Taylor. No, put the guys out and win the show. Oh, I regret trusting Brittany. What's up, y'all? It's Brian Keith, and I'm back with another video. And today we'll be talking about the first jury member, Andy Santos, evicted from the Big Brother house this Thursday. Basically, we're gonna be just going over like what her thought process behind her getting evicted and who she feel like is to blame for her being the, the first member of the jury. And also, we'll be going over the topics of Taylor and all of the big hot topics of this season. And I wanna give a shout out to Showbiz Cheat Sheet, ET Canada, Us Weekly, and Catherine Dunn. And if you would like to watch the full interviews in its entirety, drop down to the description box where the link will be provided for your viewing pleasure. All right, y'all, like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get into the video. Yeah. Let me check my check my shit real quick. Hotter than the fire, come out. I'm a flaming lips. You wanna play with me? You can't play in me. On the playground, bitch, you can't play with me. Got it, one and securing the bag. Being that Indy is part of the jury, the interviewers couldn't ask particular questions due to the fact that by asking certain questions could sway her opinion towards her vote. So they had to ask very much particular questions. I feel like these questions were very much handpicked by the producers of Big Brother. And yeah, you know, this is what we can get from Indy. This is her opinion. I'll be hopping in and out of the interviews, just giving my opinion on what we're hearing. <laughs> question is you were quick to let other house guests know how you felt were you ever worried that your behavior might sink your social game um I never worried about my behavior or my feelings or the way that I express myself to be to you know ruin my social game because I believe that at the end of the day it's a life show so it's who I truly am that's gonna like be how can I say it's gonna it's gonna be revealed so I don't think I would like be happy or I'd be I would be proud of myself first of all I just want to say that Indy is long winded like girl get to the point <laughs> <laughs> but um to her point i don't feel like indy was very much problematic especially during like the first week and she spoke up she was very much like i thought a player that had an opinion i like that about her so um i definitely feel like you know you're in a house with people that you really don't know so it is what it is with that but indy was very much a player that i was excited to see being that she was a brazilian and with the representation so yeah in a way you knew your game would come down between you or Taylor. You mm -hmm. told Joseph, Alyssa, Jasmine, and Michael that if Taylor stays, she will win the game and you will be out because of her. Mm -hmm. So they had to choose between you and her. How do you feel knowing some of those people chose her? Uh, right now, I feel really okay about it. I really think that since she had like this huge alliance and uh, I really think like she's doing a pretty good game. She's been pretty good about what she's doing. So, and I kind of knew that she was going to the end, you know, if she stayed. So with Indy's response, this just solidified for me that she was literally a floater. She didn't know what was going on in the house. She didn't know about the Leftovers Alliance. She didn't even know that her own alliance would sacrifice her for their greater good. She was just a number. She didn't have any power in the game. She didn't have any sway in the game all she was was a number and that's just very sad just because i feel like she created these bonds with people like kyle monty um michael connor taylor Brittany, and jasmine and Alyssa. so she created these bonds with with the other house guests but she was definitely collateral and she was like it's basically like trimming the fat she was somebody that could literally lead the game and no it wouldn't have affected anything and I'm kind of confused about the whole Taylor response that she said, because I, 
Indy was never cool with Taylor like that in the house. Like she never wanted to be partners with her. Like when she, she when Taylor went to um, Melissa and Indy as Fessy Besties, Alyssa and Indy did not like that because they didn't trust Taylor. So now that she's saying like, yeah, you know, Taylor's going to go all the way to the end. I'm like, damn, you just like counted out everybody else that was in the house. Like it's just one of those things like where is this coming from for me? So it's just kind of confusing a little bit. Now, the next question is, it seemed like you didn't like Taylor. Why was oh. that? And do you wish you had approached that relationship differently? There was never a thing that I didn't like Taylor. Okay, so one, I don't think questions like this should have been asked because this can sway jury members. Let's say Taylor does get to final two. So all the jury members can be like, oh, well, you know, the interviewers asked us about Taylor. Like, we didn't like Taylor. So that can sway people's opinion to, like, give a pity vote to Taylor. Like, oh, she went through all this. Maybe, like, Taylor and Michael sitting together. And, and Michael wins, like, three more HOHs. And Taylor doesn't win any other HOH besides the one she already had. That can be kind of unfair where it's like now you have sympathy for this other person. And that blocks over or negates all of the gameplay that they have done in the house. Now it's just like, well, you know, we feel bad for Taylor and, you know, she really overcome what she did. I'm not taking that away from Taylor at all. But looking at game, that could be kind of, I mean, unfair to give that information out. And yes, I feel like they all should be held accountable for the words that they said and the actions that they've done. But I don't know if this was the right way to do it. You get in a house with 50 different people that you have no idea who they are and you were there 24 seven. It's a lot. So there will be people that you connect right away. There will be people that you're going to connect in three months. There will be people that you connect in one year and there will be people that you're never really going to connect with. So I didn't feel a connection with Taylor in the first week. Even that, I always defended her. I always tried to be honest to her. I always spoke to her that, like, I gave her the opportunity and gave myself the opportunity to get to know each other, to listen to each other. I was always really honest to her, and I always had her back, even if she was not part of my closest friends or close, like, alliances. So to her point, I can definitely respect the fact that she said that she wasn't close to Taylor um, in the beginning, but she, you know, she went out her way to like have her back or speak up for her. And we did see that at times in on the live feeds, how she told the house, like, why is everybody talking about Taylor? She was like one of the first her and Michael um, basically spoke up on Taylor's behalf. So that is true. But there did come a time where it's like Indy oh, Indy really didn't speak bad on Taylor but Indy definitely didn't want people to work with Taylor she definitely saw Taylor as a threat and she definitely had animosity I want to say hatred like how Daniel and Nicole but it was animosity toward Taylor I feel like a lot of people didn't get close to Taylor in the beginning because of that whole situation that happened obviously Taylor felt segregated from the house I mean, she wouldn't have been crying and been like ostracized by herself. Like, I mean, that happened. So, I mean, that's that was a fact. But it's one of those situations with India. I mean, she did at times stand up for Taylor. So cool. I mean, peace about that. And I, I wish that I would like approach our relationship in a different way. I really believe that they put both of us in the house to become best friends. Now, I don't know what she's talking about right here. It sounds like a, a load of bullshit to me. But what do you guys think? Um, How do you feel about her comments so far? Like, go down in the comment section and let me know what you guys think. I love reading you guys' comments because it's so funny and true. She is you said that you want the person to win to be an honest person. Does Michael's goodbye message outing his alliance put him as an honest person in your eyes or a liar? Um, it's really like in the middle of it, but I believe that even if he lied to me, he gave me uh, the best that he could, you know, better than other people that were 
telling me the truth or telling me that I'm not voting for you or judging me or pushing me to the edge to say that like I was wrong or I did this and I did that and I did that. Um, I really think he's still an honest person. And so I actually don't think it was kind of fair for Michael to even reveal that information because it made it seem very much biased to in his favor that is like well you know i was in this alliance and i wanted to keep you and i i i i i so it definitely seemed like he was playing um what jerry management and i definitely don't feel like michael is a liar by any means um even if it's like big brother you know big brother we all lie but it's like one of the situation where it's like i don't see him as a liar or like a snake player but I do feel like Michael is putting a huge target on his back and he's making a lot of moves and he's preparing himself to be um, in the final two seat while doing jury management, talking to people, gaining their trust, showing that he's like the best player. Because right now, Michael is at the top of the leaderboard where it's like he should be everybody's target, period. But if I had to pick between who Indy would give her vote to, it's between Taylor and Michael. Other people you regret trusting? If so, who? Ooh, I regret trusting Brittany. And I regret trusting Kyle. So I will actually have to agree with this 100%. I feel like Brittany has been a snake throughout this whole game, but a snake in a good way. I feel like she's definitely playing under the radar and definitely dumbing herself down to the point where it's like, it makes it seem like she's Michael's sidekick, but Michael is the bigger target. Whereas like, who would go for Brittany? If Michael and Brittany sit, at, sit in the eviction chair together, they're voting on Michael over Brittany. So I feel like Brittany's in the best spot. She covered all her bases where she's getting all the information and she's doing what she has to do. Kyle, on the other hand, he has crossed too many people. Like you kicked out, you evicted Indy when you said that she was safe. She's part of your alliance. You pulled her in your um, alliance last week and now you don't think she's going to be bitter about it. She will give her vote to Taylor, Monty, um, Michael before she give it to Kyle. What do you think of Michael's goodbye message? You seem shocked at the time. Mm -hmm. So I kind of called that alliance when Monty was an HOH and he told me that was not a thing and I, I kind of let it go, but I was shocked that I knew it and I couldn't, you know, do anything about it. So for people that want to play Big Brother or future Big Brother players, trust your intuition. This is a classic example. Indy is telling you exactly like, you know, I thought and I could have sworn that they were all working together. Literally, she was in the room before they celebrated the first time they all got together in um, production told her to go to the diary room they all celebrate it like she was the last one in that room so it was like if anybody would have peeped it it would have been her and for her to say like yeah you know i thought that they were all working together but you know i couldn't do nothing about it it just goes to show that floating through the game can only get you so far like you can only float so far and and then you're just gonna be a player that's just like literally faded to the background or jury member that you're like yeah you're part of the jury but you didn't do anything nothing for your legacy as a player it seemed like you didn't like taylor why was that and do you wish you had approached that relationship differently okay there was never a thing about not liking taylor so to give you guys a heads up every single outlet asked india a question about not liking taylor and this is why i feel like this question shouldn't have been brought up for the simple fact that it's going to reiterate to indy that Maybe Taylor had really had it hard. And let's say the jury's members, um, when they all get together, they all talk about, like, dang, if Taylor make it far, they talk about how Taylor had it so bad, this and the third. And that could really sway their opinion on maybe throwing her a vote and making her a win. And I'm not saying that she doesn't deserve the win. She do deserve the win because, I mean, there's so much game left to play. We're at the half mark. But let's say she doesn't deserve the win and then she get throw, thrown that bone. I really don't think it's fair, to be honest.
And I love Taylor as a person, as a player. I've loved seeing her on my TV screen while rooting for her each week. I'm just saying this just to be fair. Right is right and wrong is wrong. For people, 24-7, sometimes you're going to connect with people in a week. Sometimes you're going to connect with people in three weeks. And sometimes you're never going to connect with people. And I never say that I don't like Taylor. I say that I didn't connect with her in the first week. And even that, I always defended her. I always had her back. I always like tried to protect her. And I always tried to be honest with her. Since week one. First week when Danielle put her on the blog and I knew that she was going home with like 12 votes, I had like a really bad morning. I cried all day and I was like, Daniel, I'm not voting her out because I don't want anyone to go home in the first week with 12 votes. I don't think that's okay. And I would feel so bad that was that that would happen with me. And I hope you guys see that. I really do hope that you guys see that. So I understand her sentiment and her statement, but her saying I always had her back and I always defended her and I always did this, that, and the third, that is just, uh, I mean, it's just a lie. I mean, we saw what we saw. Like Taylor was in that house solo for Dolo in that first week. Like I said previously, Indy did stick up for her. Indy and Michael were the one of the first two. Those were like the only people that I saw really speaking up for Taylor. And it wasn't like a lot, like every time. It was like one time, like, hey, like, I don't like how this conversation is going towards her. And Michael brought up like, okay, if, you, if you're going to vote her out, let's vote her out off of like the game. Because this is really getting towards like something else. And we all know that production had talked to the house guests about microaggressions and bullying within the house and literally after that that's when i saw on the feeds that indy was telling people that they need to stop um like bullying taylor so and she knows that and she feels that way we talked a lot during this past weeks and her feedback to me was always like i love you so much because you were always honest with me and i know you always had my back i found it a little bit funny because it's like once these house guests, especially this year, they leave the house, they suddenly have amnesia. That is just like, well, you know, I always liked her and I always, I'm just like, okay, I, I get that you like her now, but like, that wasn't, that. that's not what we saw. Like, I'm not saying Indy was like the main at antagonist. No. We know Daniel and Nicole ran Taylor name through the motherfucking mud. But, I mean... For her to say, like, well, you know, we were put in this house to be, like, best friends and stuff. Like, cap, girl, stop. And people have to realize production and the casting directors put people in the house to have conflict and not like each other. It's okay not to like someone, but what people have to realize with coming on Big Brother, you have to justify your actions. If you don't like somebody, justify it. Say, I didn't like her because of this, that, 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 do, do, do. Like, there has to be a reason. You can't just just automatically just act like everything is cool, like Daniel and Nicole. I hope I don't get this type of questions anymore because that's not the truth. Said when you left that the house guests would regret evicting you. Who do you think will end up regretting it the most? I believe my friends like Monty, Michael, Joseph... I think at the end of the day, you should choose to play with people that you love and that you want, that you want to have by the end. So I agree that they will regret sending home Indy. Like Indy would not have been my vote to send home. It would have been Terrence. I feel like Terrence, especially him winning the HOH. Terrence is about to throw a curveball at everyone that's in his side of the house. But the whole situation with Indy saying like, well, you know, they should have kept me to the end because, you know, we're friends and we love each other. That's some bullshit. Regardless of the fact, if you're a waste of space, you're a waste of space. Trend the fat and get it out. At the end of the day, she has to realize that she didn't contribute anything else to the to the game. The only thing she can benefit now is a, a jury vote. That is it. That was like the main thing she probably could do. Like, is it, like, vote somebody to uh, win this money and just take it and do what you got to do. That's, that's it. But I feel like the main person that's going to regret it is Monty and Kyle. Those are the only two people that's going to regret kicking Indy out because Indy would have voted with Kyle no matter what because of Alyssa. 
Now, last question. What surprised you the most about playing Big Brother? Oh my gosh, it surprised me that people really like put the price tags on them. So I don't know why this annoyed me so much, but for her to say like, you know, people put the price tag or whatever, like they're worried about money. This game, literally one person is going to win $750,000. So for them just to be like, well, you know, you're worried about money. Yes, you came on the show for money. That's it. It's so it's so irritating for them just to act so dense, like, like, oh my God, well, you know, I, they're, they're worried about the money and not worried about creating connections. I said it once and I'll say it again. If I ever get on Big Brother, fuck all of that. I don't care about no showmance. I mean, I might, you know, <laughs> but I don't care about none of that. Like at the end of the day, like I'm here for the money. If I had to vote out my mom, sorry, mom, I know you're listening. If I had to vote out my mom, you gotta go. Hit the dough, hit the road, Jack. <laughs> I you target Kyle for sure, like a hundred percent sure, because he was the one who approached me with the second alliance, the five swatters, and uh, I didn't need his help back at that time. So I think he lied about the whole thing. So he would like literally be my target. I know I didn't say that to him, but. Yes, I would love to see him out of the house. So this is definitely a shoulda, coulda, woulda question. <laughs> because, I mean, she shoulda, she coulda, but I mean, yeah. But um, I definitely agree. I feel like Kyle is, has been running around with his head chopped off. Like, with the whole questionable comments about the white alliance is just weird uh, that he's coming up with this. How he's trying to um get all the minorities out. I don't know if that's his goal, but it's just very weird of what he's trying to come up with. He just seemed very frantic. And then, like, what he's doing right now inside the house with um, with the whole split house, how he is trying to, he's spilling all the beans to Terrence. And it just seems like he is desperate to not get evicted, which, I mean, do what you got to do to win the money. This is about the money. But you put your whole game on the line be, for Alyssa. Instead of thinking with your head, you thought with the other one. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Living with someone 24-7, it's really different than watching a show three times a week. So, I wish, I really wish, and I said that yesterday, and I will keep repeating that, and I, I, I think I got to know her better this last week, that she was on the HOH and I was on the blog, we talked more. And I had like, I finally received like some love coming from her and it was pretty cool. And like, even if I was the one that went home, like I still think that we probably were set up to be, to become friends. So Annie makes the point that she said she felt a lot of love come from Taylor this last week, and she felt closer to Taylor this last week. I mean, Taylor was a HOH, so nine times out of ten, she had to talk to Taylor. She had to force herself to really get and, like, campaign for herself to stay in the house. So it's like, obviously, you're going to be closer to Taylor, and obviously, you're going to get closer to her because she's the HOH. So, I mean, you're trying to save yourself. But, I mean... She got to know her. She went outside her comfort zone and she had to talk to Taylor. So she got to know her and she really, I guess she found out she liked her. Like they both are on a good page. Like I said in my last video, I don't feel like Taylor would not grant an audience to talk to any anybody after the show. I feel like she's very open to talk to all of them. So, I mean, yeah, we'll see what happens with that. With Taylor, as I said last week, was the my favorite week for our relationship. I believe that the person that's playing the best game right now is Monty and Taylor. So I would have to respectfully disagree. I feel like I am stuck with between three people. I feel like who's playing the best game 
for me personally is Britney. I feel like nobody has Britney on their radar and all Britney has to do is start winning like small things like win a couple of vetoes and then win a an HOH and then go back to being like Michael's sidekick quote unquote right I feel like Monty is playing a, a pretty good game um it almost blew up with the whole Daniel situation after the um, eviction of Nicole but I mean Monty got back into a good spot where it's like nobody's really looking at him right now um and I want to say Michael. I want to say Michael so bad because I feel like Michael is the number one player right now. But with Michael, Michael has put the biggest red bullseye on his back. And he should be the next person. Not this week because we know he won HOH. But next week, being that he can't win HOH, he should be the target. And if he's not the target, then these people don't know how to play Big Brother. Period. Who I think is playing the worst game, in my opinion, is Alyssa. A thousand percent agree. Alyssa is playing the absolute worst game out of everyone this whole year, even Paloma. <laughs> okay, like Alyssa, all she wanted was a showmance. All she wanted was just to be here. She said that she's a super fan. Can't be. Because you see this, you see the game moves going on. You see all the stuff that's going on, and you're doing absolutely nothing besides making out, fucking sucking, and that's it. You're not doing anything else to win this money. So let's say Alyssa do make it to the final two. Whoever she sits besides, they will win that money, hands down. And Kyle, if Kyle sits besides her at that final, he will win that money over her. Period. And if, let's say, Kyle doesn't sit beside her, if he's in jury, he wouldn't even vote for her. Who do you think were the conspiring bitches of the season? Oh, uh, I think Brittany. And, um, yeah, Brittany Turner, somewhere in there, you know? I would actually agree with her again. I do feel like Brittany and Turner have a lot up their sleeve that they're not showing right now. I feel like they're keeping their cards close to chess. The only thing about Turner, which is the reason why I don't think he is playing the, like the best game, is the fact that I feel like if you put him in a seat beside Michael, he wouldn't win. Even with beside Monty, I don't think he would win because Turner is very much low-key, just like Brittany. Where I feel like this second half of the game, they're going to have to start making moves. At this point, you're going to have to make moves. Because now, you're over here. The people you send home, you have to basically tell them, this is the reason why I sent you home. And this is the re reason why you should give me this money. Like, you have to start making these decisions so you can be eligible to win that check. Okay? The BB Brazil format is much different than the U.S. format with all of the power lying in the fans' vote. If it were up to the fans in this game, do you think this season's eviction would have gone any differently? Which ones? Oh, I believe that, for sure. And the one that I really think that would be super different would be, I first of all, I believe that people's behavior would be different. So, and then automatically the the evictions would be I think it's funny that she's talking about people's behavior would have been different but obviously she hasn't seen um UK Big Brother because they all go dumb stupid over there they don't play I feel like over in the UK they're more like oh, I'm in your face I'm gonna argue I'm gonna yell and over here is more like I'm gonna be sneaky and lie but the UK has the same format as um Big Brother Brazil so, but I believe Amira was a really amazing player. So I don't see that she would like leave the house in the second, third week. You know, I want to agree with her because I feel like Amira was a strong player. She definitely was one of the stronger ones that I had in like my top three, top four. But the first five or the first four people that have been evicted out of this game, 
I mean, they got hell on social media. So to be honest, I don't think she probably it would have went any differently. It would have been a, a shock to the um the house guests, but I don't think it would have went any differently because a lot of people did not like the first few people that have left the show. They have got hell and brimstone at them. God bless me. <laughs> in your eviction speech, you said that you wanted to stay so you and the other house kids can show that this game can be played in an honest, loving, and happy way. But do you think that you played an honest, loving, and happy game? Question mark. I'm 100% sure that I did. And uh, I don't know how much you guys can see it, how much... Uh, in the added version i'm gonna cut her off right there because can they please stop bringing up editing we have access to damn near 24 7 live feeds the time they cut it off is when they get ready for these freaking competitions or if there's like a huge 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 altercation where somebody might get punched in the face but i hate when they're like well you know the the added version to be honest, if anybody is watching these exit interviews, they're probably super fans and they probably watch the live feeds. So to bring up the edited version is irrelevant. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, if she thinks she played an honest game, that's her. Cool. That That's fine. What do you guys think about Indy? Rate her down in the comments from 1 to 10. What kind of player would you rate her as? I'll comment with you guys to let y'all know my rate. <laughs> In Joseph's goodbye message, he said he had your back in the game, but Michael's goodbye message said otherwise. Who do you believe? Who do you feel betrayed by? I believe Michael's speech. I believe that Joseph feels like bad and he's, he doesn't have like, he's not courage enough to tell me the truth or he doesn't want to hurt my feelings. I feel like both Michael and Joseph um, were was okay with Indy leaving. So I feel like at that regard, nobody really had her back like that. Nobody was going to bat for Indy. And if they were going to bat for Indy, then why wasn't she in the Alliance? She wasn't in the Leftovers Alliance. She wasn't part of any big talks. Every time they said something to her, they basically tried to say that she was safe when obviously she wasn't safe and eventually got evicted. So, I mean, yeah. But she gagged me, though, when she was like, oh, Joseph oh, didn't have enough courage. I said, well, damn. <laughs> Tell me how you really feel. I believe that the whole house will turn against Brittany and Kyle. I believe that Alisa can make a new alliance with Taylor. And they can make to the final two if they are lucky enough, and you know, and they can kick the guys' asses. I don't know if I can say it <laughs> Um, so I feel like this is like a good stopping point. I mean, I feel like, yeah, with Alyssa, girl to the bye. I mean, if, if Alyssa do make it to the end with Taylor, she just signed that check to Taylor. Signs are delivered, but t t uh, for Indy's overall archetype and her her as a player, her player analysis, as, as we can say, Indy was a, ooh, this is going to sound so bad, but Indy was a bona fide floater, and to it, it didn't cause that much of a ripple for her to get evicted. She was a vote. She was, I mean, jury, a jury vote. I mean, make it easier. But her fatal error was she said she knew information, but she didn't do anything about it. She had an intuition about the leftovers, but she had didn't do anything about it. She questioned Monty's motive, but didn't do anything about it. She questioned Kyle, but didn't do anything. Y'all see the y'all see the trend? Yeah. So with Indy, I wish she could have actually made some moves. And to be honest, it's hard to make moves in the game when you do not win HOH or you don't win POV or when you're not in the, in the 
any alliances. When you're just there, just to be there, and you're not trying to win shit, that's just what happens. You just float along until somebody just picks you off. You can't really get mad. It is what it is. But what do you guys think? Comment down below and let me know what you guys think. This was a good um, reaction um, to her um, interviews. I feel like some of the questions shouldn't have been asked because I'm like, I mean, it definitely seemed persuasive. But it is what it is. Like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you guys think. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.